What's up everyone, Rob from Ishimoto. Today we're going to install our baffle catch can system on your 2015 or 2016 Subaru WRX. Let's get started. Tools recommended for installation include 2.5, 7 and 10 millimeter sockets, a 7 millimeter swivel or quarter inch universal swivel with a 7 millimeter socket, quarter inch drive ratchet, driver and extension, 12 millimeter and 14 millimeter shallow and deep sockets, 3 8 drive ratchet and extensions, 10 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver, panel tool, long and short needle nose pliers, diagonal cutters, and pop clip pliers. Installation time is about two hours. Installation difficulty is a four out of five. It's recommended that you drain the contents of the catch can every 1,000 miles until a baseline for oil accumulation is established. This will be different for every car and will change based on ambient temperatures and driving conditions. Assemble the catch cans. The small Allen bolts and washers will be used to secure the cans to the brackets. The tall bracket and small fitting will be used to install the PCV side catch can. The L-shaped bracket and larger fittings will be used to install the CCV side catch can. Thread the fittings into the catch cans and snug them down. These fittings have a tapered thread so they won't be flush with the can when fully installed. Now attach the brackets to the cans with the provided Allen bolts and washers. Remove the two pop clips that secure the intake air duct to the radiator support. Then remove the air intake duct. Remove the two pop clips that secure the back of the plastic engine cover. Then remove the engine cover from the vehicle by lifting it from the front edge. The front edge is held on with two pegs and grommets. Remove the two bolts that secure the support bracket to the engine. Then remove the bracket. Take note of how the belt is routed and draw yourself a diagram for later. Then take the tension off the belt and remove it from the AC compressor pulley. The tensioner bolt is a 14 millimeter fastener. Release the harness clips that secure the alternator cable and disconnect the electrical harness from the AC compressor. Then lift the alternator cable out of the harness clips and tuck it back. Disconnect the alternator cable from the intake manifold by compressing the tabs on the clip and sliding it out of the manifold. Remove the four bolts that secure the AC compressor and engine hook. Then remove the engine hook and move the compressor forward to expose the CCV port underneath. Remove the pop clips that secure the crankcase vent hose to the intake manifold. Reach down behind the AC compressor and compress the clamp that secures the CCV hose to the engine. Then separate the hose from the engine. Follow the CCV hose down to the port where it connects to the turbocharger inlet. Compress the clamp that secures this connection and then disconnect the hose. Separate the CCV hose from the clip that secures it and then remove the CCV hose from the vehicle. Remove the forward nut from the battery tie down and install the catch can with the L-shaped bracket over the stud on the tie down. Then secure the can and battery with the original nut. Locate the hose in your kit with three bends. Lead the end with the 90 degree bend under the electrical harness and AC lines as shown here. Slip a worm gear clamp over the end of the hose and install it to the CCV port on the engine. Now tighten the clamp to secure the hose. Slip a hose clamp over the other end of this hose and install it to the port marked in on the catch can. Reinstall the AC compressor and engine hoist bracket. Secure them with the original bolts. For hard to reach bolts, try this trick. Wedge a piece of shop towel between the bolt and the socket to keep the fastener in place while you thread it in. Secure the alternator cable with the harness clips and reattach the wiring harness to the AC compressor.
Locate the long hose in your kit. This will connect the CCV side catch can to the turbocharger inlet. Route the end with all of the bends down between the intercooler pipe and the radiator hose. Slip a worm gear clamp over the end of this hose and install it to the port on the turbocharger inlet. Then secure the hose with the clamp. Lead the hose so it follows the intake manifold across the engine bay. Slip it under the AC line and install a worm gear clamp over the end of this hose. Attach the hose to the port marked out on the catch can. Then tighten the clamp to secure the hose. Locate the zip tie tree clips included with your kit. Install the zip ties around the CCV hose as shown here. Then secure the CCV hose to the intake manifold. Check to make sure the hose is properly routed, then tighten the zip ties and trim off the excess. Reinstall the serpentine belt. If you leave one of the smooth idler pulleys until last, it will make the installation much easier. Reinstall the support bracket and secure it with the two bolts. Now go back and tighten the bolts that secure the catch can to the bracket. The excess hose on the CCV side can allows for easy access to the oil filler cap when it's time to perform service. Loosen the clamps at the inlet and outlet of the intercooler. Remove the bolts that secure the driver's side intercooler mounting bracket. Then remove the bracket. Note that the longer bolt is the one that secures the intercooler to the bracket, while the shorter bolts secure the bracket to the engine. Remove the bolt that secures the intercooler mounting bracket on the passenger side. Separate the intercooler pipe from the passenger side of the intercooler, and then remove the intercooler from the vehicle. Locate the PCV hose behind the intake manifold. This is a short hose running from a valve on top of the engine block to a port on the back of the intake manifold. Compress the clamps that secure the hose and slide them off the connections. Then remove the hose. If you're having trouble getting to the manifold side of the hose, separate the harness connector from the bracket by pressing the lock tab on the underside of the connector and sliding it off. Install the PCV side catch can to the radiator support. Slip the catch can and bracket underneath the radiator support and align it with the holes as shown here. Locate the washers included with your kit and place them over the holes. The large washer goes over the slotted hole and the small washer goes over the round hole. Secure the catch can with the remaining bolts and nylock nuts. Locate the hose with a single 90 degree bend. Note that one end of this hose has a larger diameter outlet. Slip a worm gear clamp over the end with the 90 degree bend and install this to the port marked out on the catch can. Lead the wider end of the hose under the wiring harness and the hoses at the back of the intake manifold. Then install a worm gear clamp over it. We will come back and connect this end later. Locate the last hose in your kit. Note that one end of the hose has a sharper bend than the other. Install the hose clamp over the end with a sharper bend and lead it alongside the hose you just installed. Now connect it to the PCV valve on the top of the engine block. Slide the worm gear clamp into place and tighten it to secure the hose. This is a tricky clamp to reach. I used a driver with an extension and a swivel socket to make easy work of it. Now attach the wide end of the first hose you led to the port on the intake manifold. Slip a worm gear clamp into place and tighten it to secure the hose. Slip a worm gear clamp over the last hose end and connect it to the port marked in on the catch can. Slide the clamp down the hose and then tighten both of the clamps at the catch can. Check the routing on your hoses. The hose connected to the in port on the catch can should be attached to the PCV valve on the engine block. The hose connected to the out port on the catch can should be attached to the port on the intake manifold. Now, tighten the bolts that secure the catch can to the bracket. Reinstall the intercooler. Connect the hot side intercooler pipe first, then connect the cold side. Install the driver side intercooler mounting bracket and thread in the three bolts that secure it. Remember that the longer bolt secures the intercooler to the bracket. 
Then install the bolt that secures the passenger side of the intercooler and tighten it. Now you can go back and tighten all of the bolts on the driver's side and reconnect the brake booster hose to the bracket. Tighten the clamps at the intercooler inlet and outlet. Install the intake air duct and secure it with the pop clips. Reinstall the engine cover. Press the two pegs at the front of the cover into the grommets on the support bracket and adjust the catch can hoses so they won't be pinched by the cover. Then install the pop clips to secure the top of the cover. Now that you've got the catch cans installed, go ahead and fire up your Subaru for a test drive. We recommend checking the contents of each can every thousand miles until a baseline for oil accumulation has been established. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out.